Today's webinar is entitled The Posters of Pierre Mandel. As suggested by the late Massimo Vignelli, the Vignelli Center for Design Studies at RIT is hosting a major exhibit of graphic designer Pierre Mandel's posters concurrently in both Bevere and the University Gallery beginning August 25th. As part of the event, Annette Kroger of the Pierre Mendel Design Studio will visit RIT on September 4th at 1 o'clock to deliver the Vignelli Center's first Design Conversation Lecture of the 2014-2015 academic year. We encourage everyone to visit vignellicenter.rit.edu for information about this important exhibit. Our presenters today are Roger Remington, the Vignelli Distinguished Professor of Design, and Jessica Erickson, Manager of RIT's University Gallery. Roger Remington is the longest serving faculty member at RIT and is enjoying his 51st year of teaching. He considers himself primarily a teacher who has critical interests in design studies, research, writing, and graphic design practice. In addition to teaching and research, he has co-chaired two major symposia on graphic design history and written four books on design history. He's working on his fifth. He is also the driving force behind RIT's Cary Graphic Design Archive, a scholarly resource for designers and historians. In fall 2008, Roger was a laureate for induction into the Hall of Fame of the New York Art Directors Club and in 2009, he was honored with the Gittner Family Award for Outstanding Achievement in Graphic Communication. In 2013, he was honored with admission to the prestigious Alliance Graphique Internationale, or AGI, and his teaching quality has been acknowledged with receipt of the Eisenhart Annual Award for Outstanding Teaching, RIT's highest recognition of teaching excellence. Jessica Erickson is the gallery manager in RIT's University Gallery, a spectacular exhibit site and event venue adjacent to the Vignelli Center for Design Studies. Jessica holds a, degree, a dual degree in business management and fine arts from Loyola University, Maryland. Jessica has more than 10 years of event planning experience and over seven years of gallery work experience including overseeing University Gallery operations since 2011, joining RIT shortly after the gallery opened its doors to the university community. And now, I'll turn it over to you, Roger and Jessica. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, as a gallery, we try to showcase exhibitions that inspire innovation and creativity in today's RIT students. We look for academic applications to complement the visual displays that support the humanities. Um, the University Gallery is a separate entity from the Vignelli Center, but we have certainly been enriched by our proximity. The Vignelli Center has connected us with world-renowned graphic design exhibits, including Bruno Manguzzi, Armando Milani, Burton Kramer, and Joseph Albers, as well as our upcoming fall exhibit that we are very excited about and to talk, here to talk about today, Pierre Mendel. The Mendel exhibit is going to be absolutely fantastic. I have been working very closely with Betsy Merquette, the director of the Bevier Gallery on campus. The show is so big that it's actually going to be featured in the University Gallery and continue down the hall into the Bevier Gallery as well. Uh, Betsy and I have been assembling and framing the works this past week, and we are excited to start hanging the posters next week. The show will feature 70 posters um, from Pierre Mendel's collection. They're very large scale, so they're going to have a lot of visual impact. They feature a lot of bold colors. Uh, they range from cultural posters to corporate identities. And we, we can't wait to see what it looks like when they, when they are all here. And now I'll turn it to Roger to tell you a little bit more about Pierre. Well, um, it's uh, interesting to uh, launch the academic year with such an exciting event here, both from the standpoint of the, the exhibit in a major way and then other, um, uh, other events, events connected to it. Uh, 
Uh, this is the second time we've uh, you had both galleries uh, involved in, in a major poster exhibit, and uh, we're very pleased and excited to have this opportunity. Uh, Pierre Mandel, uh, the, the designer of the posters, was born in uh, Essen, Germany in two, 1929 and passed away in uh, uh, Munich, Germany in 2008. Um, he's uh, famous for uh, his poster designs and his large-scale compositions. They're clear and striking colors, uh, somewhat abstract formal vocabulary and distinctive typography. Uh, and they really have been uh, uh, exciting, I hear, to uh, see them on the streets of, uh, of Munich and, and other cities in Germany. Um, as visual invitations full of humor, passion, and poetry, their messages strike straight to the heart of the viewer, which is the way posters should be. Um, the great uh, Russian constructivist poster designer, uh, El Lizitsky said, uh, uh, a poster should first seduce the eye and then address the intelligence. And I think that uh, we see this happening consistently in, in Pierre Mendel's work. We're going to launch the, uh, the whole event with a, uh, a speech by Annette Kroger uh, from, from Munich. Annette, uh, has been in charge of the Pierre Mendel Design Studio in Munich since 2009, after working there for many years as Mendel's assistant. And we're looking forward to hosting um, uh, Annette, and we uh, uh, hope very much that uh, her comments will amplify the, uh, the, the experience of looking at the posters of Pierre Mendel. So here we can maybe glance at uh, a selection, a small selection of some of, of uh, Mendel's posters. Um, he said at one point, uh, uh, the way that people communicate with one another also defines their culture. And if we can include a little culture in everyday graphic design, so much the better. And this really was a... Um, kind of a guiding philosophy uh, among much of his work. So we'll, we'll go through uh, some of the posters and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, interestingly enough in the, uh, in the exhibit, all the posters um, are, the, are the same size. So it makes it a really uh, 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 consistent kind of uh, presentation, both from the standpoint of the, the, the gallery people that put this together as well as the uh, the, uh, the, overall, uh, the overall show. Uh, many of uh, Mendel's posters were uh, uh, done to promote uh, social causes. Um, and uh, uh, we, see, uh, we see one here which, uh, which obviously uh, deals with, uh, with hunger and, uh, and uh, sharing of, um, of resources. Um, Mendel did a, uh, uh, a good deal of work for the International Design Museum in Munich. And, uh, and so many of his posters are, um, are connected with events around that. Uh, this uh, is an interesting uh, takeoff on the, uh, the uh, uh, cross, the, the cross symbol, the red cross symbol for, the, uh, for Switzerland. And uh, so here we see a, a, a poster exhibiting uh, uh, book design uh, in Switzerland. And uh, some of the posters have a, a figurative sense, uh, such as this one. Some also have a, uh, a quality of, uh, of uh, abstraction. Uh, the, uh, the interesting uh, quality of many of these posters is their sense of ambiguity. Uh, there's uh, such as this poster we see now, where there's a figure upright and then a figure upside down. Um, it's um, uh, ambiguity is an interesting quality in, in graphic design. It um, uh, we like to think that uh, uh, even though ambiguity has a kind of a bad name from the standpoint of the of the linguistic world, uh, in the in the graphic world we we think that. Uh, Ambiguity is a wonderful way for a designer to build interest. 
and, and uh, catch the eye of the observer, so to speak. And when that happens, then there's a very good chance that the viewer is going to uh, remember what they see. And that's a good quality, a good goal for any piece of design is that it's memorable. So watch for, for these qualities as we go through these, uh, these posters. Now here's, a, here's an interesting one that's strictly, uh, strictly uh, abstract um, uh, and symbolic, really. Uh, the star is a, a universal symbol. Um, we certainly, uh, uh, certainly means a good deal in the U.S. when it's uh, uh, used in certain colors. Here we have a, a, some meaning involved in terms of the, uh, the broken leg of the, of the star. And again, here we have a broken heart, actually. So um, uh, it's uh, uh, interesting, the, the progression of the break in the center, the fact that you can perceive this uh, as, a, um, as a heart still, even though it's split apart. And, uh, and uh, this shows you the, the, the work of a master designer is that they can have just enough separation in here so that it's it's clearly broken, but it also still reads as a heart itself, and that, that's, uh, it's not too far, it's not too close. A very dramatic uh, uh, a poster here, uh, which is um, uh, very, very, basically very simple in concept. Uh, uh, many of these kind of, uh, uh, I think this is a good example of a kind of a dramatic uh, 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 a control of, of what otherwise would be seen as, as, a, as an accident. And that poster, if you want to go back for a second, is part of the Bavarian State Opera collection, and this is the story of Macbeth. Ah, okay, so that's, uh, you've done a little research here, Jessica, that's great. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and please jump in here as we go across. Now, uh, uh, here we have an exhibit for the, or a poster for the International Museum in Munich, and uh, uh, strictly, uh, this would be, I would call this a very formal kind of approach, where you have this pattern of squares, very modernist symbol, which uh, is just carefully put over the typography so that you can, you can, um, uh, you can see the, you can read the typography, but uh, but there's this uh, slight barrier there, which again. Uh, uh, involves us in the process of perception, and when we are involved in the, when the viewer is involved in the process, then we're going to remember this. And uh, and this is an idea that really was uh, uh, put forth a, uh, uh, tremendously by the postmodernist uh, designer Wolfgang Weingart from Switzerland. And uh, so it's interesting to see the influence here of the uh, the Swiss on the German. Again, talking about uh, simplicity, uh, uh, this uh, this uh, poster, which uh, talks about the new, uh, is um, uh, and again uh, also for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, International Museum in in Munich. Uh, probably uh, this would uh, was representing a, a new work uh, that was uh, that was shown in the 80s. But I think it's interesting to see the range of uh, of um, uh, Mendel's work from from some which are quite uh, bold and, and and textured to others which are more uh, simple and straightforward. Um, we see here in this poster the the, uh, the orderly alignment of the uh, type at the top and the, uh, the center, the type on the right with the Left edge of the uh, of, of the letter form E and the U, and so there's a a, a very uh, uh, orderly uh, sense to the way these these elements are, are put together here, and um, uh, and uh, it, it it proves the fact that uh, uh, communication does not necessarily entire uh, imply have to imply complexity, but it can often be very effective uh, in a, in a simple. Uh, presentation. And again, we have a, 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 a collection here of, um, of uh, signatures uh, and, um, and how they become a, a texture. Uh, 
Uh, texture is, uh, again, a, an element that uh, graphic designers very often will, uh, will utilize in, um, in, uh, in adding uh, detail, which again adds interest to, um, to the composition. Uh, the, the viewer probably wants to start looking at these signatures and trying to, uh, trying to perceive them and find meaning in what, what they all add up to. Again, a, um, a very simple uh, approach. Uh, Mendel liked to, um, to suggest texture with uh, uh, different ways, and here we have this, this very interesting kind of torn edge. Um, and, um, and one can, um, one can uh, peruse this and uh, speculate on the, uh, on, on, on the meaning of these shapes and forms. Um, uh, and, uh, and and try to uh, uh, try to find meaning in, in that, and, and in that, again, in that process, one can uh, one can uh, uh, have an experience uh, with the poster, with the, with the perception of the um, of the imagery. And a lot of the posters have that dimension where they're just popping off of the page. A few of the other ones have that too, where there's that overlapping in the shadow, and it looks three dimensional while it's still a two dimensional mm -hmm. poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, impact is, is a, a very important uh, quality in posters. Uh, uh, one, of the, um, one of the great um, uh, French uh, poster designers na named A.M. Cassandra uh, said one time that, uh, you know, a poster is a piece of artwork that went out on the street. And I think that's, uh, that really uh, explains the, 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 the functionality of a good deal of this. The poster in, in Europe is really still a, an important communication medium, uh, and one sees beautiful big posters on, on kiosks and on, and on walls and, and uh, many places in, in, uh, in just about every country in Europe. In the United States, the, the poster has um, uh, become more of a, um, of a, a collector's item, really, uh, something that... Uh, uh, Collectors like to have a large format piece of, of a communication work, uh, and um, uh, and so it, we don't see the the poster as a uh, as a function as a tremendously functional communication uh, form uh, anymore. And so it is interesting to to uh, contrast the, the uh, what happens in Europe and what happens in the uh, in the U.S. in regard to the the purpose and function of posters. And maybe that's why. Uh, uh, one reason why <clears throat> these these exhibits that we have at RIT uh, in the in the galleries uh, on on great poster designers like Mandel and, and Bruno Mangusi, maybe that's why they're so have so much uh, interest and impact is because we don't see so many posters around uh, uh, in, in our uh, in our environment, and certainly not posters of this quality of design. Now this uh, this again is a, a very interesting uh, typographic play, um, uh, where the the viewer has to um, uh, has to uh, get involved in, in, in uh, decoding these uh, these different uh, shapes, which become letter forms, and then eventually when one uh, uh, comes to the point of uh, understanding that he's really talking about a, an exhibit that deals with some kind of tolerance. Uh, then, um, then the uh, the message comes through, and uh, and uh, and one can get through. So again, this is another example of how Mendel is is uh, drawing in the viewer into the process of percep of perceiving the uh, the information, and uh, and uh, and then um, then that again becomes uh, something that the viewer is going to understand. The viewer is going to feel. Uh, a sense of achievement that they perceive this, and then they're going to remember it, and uh, that's all uh, an important part of the communication process. And certainly, Mendel is not the only uh, uh, poster designer that's used this kind of uh, kind of methodology. We have uh, many other designers in, around the world who um, who, uh, who demand the uh, the uh, involvement of, their, of the audience in the perception of whatever they're doing, whether it's symbols or 
typography or imagery. Roger, let's interject one second because we do have a question from Marjorie. Um, she asks uh, if you can speak a little bit more about the use of posters as a medium. Um, and I'm, I, you can add in here, Marjorie, if I don't have you correct, but I think we're talking about when is it more appropriate? Why would uh, uh, Mendel design a poster for someone as opposed to some other medium? We also do have to apologize. Marjorie does point out that some of the type on the posters is not readable by the time we've gone through um, uh, the transition to the web viewing system. I think we've lost some of the resolution. Um, but I think uh, we, well, certainly we encourage people to come actually see them at the at the gallery, uh, but if there are particular posters that you're interested in seeing, we can see if we can um, create an environment in which we uh, 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 can have those a little more readable for you. And, and thank you, she does clarify. She says she got the message, but it was hard to read. Um, but can you, so going back to the original question, Roger, can you speak to when uh, uh, Mendel might have used a poster as opposed to some other form? Well. Uh uh, Marjorie, it's uh, a good question. Uh, I think uh, I think Lydia just uh, uh, made an important uh, comment, and that was that uh, uh, we hope that that uh, to get the real message, uh, you'll have to come to the show and uh, see the uh, see the real posters in in all their uh, actual color and actual typography. And uh, there will be uh, uh, with each poster in the exhibit a uh, a caption which will give you more information about when the poster was done and, and uh, uh, information like that. Um, appropriateness. Now, appropriateness is a, a very important word. I think it's one of the key words when we, uh, we look at the aesthetic of, of many designers and, and it's one of the key words that uh, uh, our, our, uh, our guiding spirit, Massimo Vignelli, uh, used in terms of his um, uh, his uh, his work, and uh, he suggested this as a uh, important criteria for for other designers as well. Um, and, and I think that if if we uh, use the the term appropriateness as a kind of an evaluative uh, screening lens in which we can look at at all kinds of uh, of uh, graphic media, uh, I, I think it's helpful. Uh, I think that you know a designer has has many options in terms of, um, of uh, what they can propose as a solution to a graphic problem. Uh, we've seen we've seen a number of different approaches in, in the posters we've shown you today, from the standpoint of pure typography to uh, abstract imagery to uh, uh, representational imagery to uh, in this case we have uh, we have typography which in some cases almost seems like a line of symbols uh, and um, and so this was uh, this was um, uh, uh, Mandel's way I think of, of trying to suggest that uh, that uh, a tolerance has to do with with a lot of different uh, religions a lot of different cultures a lot of different countries and and, and that's represented by the range here so there's each each element in the poster here is different each typographic element is different, but at the same time, we can read it, and that's uh, that's the important part: is that it it, it symbolizes the, the typographic treatment appropriately symbolizes the the topic, and um, and I think that's the uh, uh, that's the important thing. Uh, but I think again, going back to the word appropriateness, I think that. Um, uh, if, if you if you look critically at uh, at uh, advertising, you look critically at, at uh, many examples of, of graphic design. Uh, I think that um, uh, uh, asking the question, you know, is 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 the designer uh, used an appropriate uh, image form, used an appropriate uh, 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 typographic form, uh, used appropriate color, uh, then. Um, uh, and I think that that uh, could all add up to uh, whether you know one would say critically that a piece of work is effective and and, uh, and well done. I hope that uh, does the job. And uh, uh, and here we have another interesting um, poster. This is uh, a poster for the uh, 
for the uh, International Design Museum in Munich. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the work of uh, a poster made up, which represents an exhibit of the work of the great uh, Swiss uh, designer, educator, Armin Hoffman, who uh, for many years was the leading force in, uh, in the uh, School of Design in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, I think Armin, uh, Armin Hoffman really was, um, was um, a major force in, in design education. Uh, at one point uh, in the uh, past 20 years, I think there were more American students uh, going, to, going to Basel to study graphic design than they had Swiss students in the school. Uh, and then many of these students have come back to the U.S. and have uh, you know, kind of spread the, this kind of Swiss approach, which again is a very modernist uh, approach, uh, one that, uh, uh, that uh, would be akin to what uh, Vignelli did. I think there's a good deal of, uh, of this kind of philosophy that uh, some of us in, in graphic design now still feel is important in terms of a formalist, uh, modernist approach. Uh, this would be, um, uh, we see this uh, uh, H, uh, again we have texture here, we have the idea of, of tone uh, implied by these dots on the right, on the vertical uh, right stroke of the H. And then the uh, the tools of the of the of the designer uh, across the center. Now it's interesting looking at these tools because they represent a pre-digital symbol. We have pencil, and we have a brush, and we have a, 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 a an architect's ruling pen or a drafting pen. And um, uh, design students today probably would have recognized the brush and the pencil, but they certainly wouldn't recognize the, uh, the ruling pen. And the ruling pen, uh, you know, uh, was uh, a tool that uh, uh, came in a drafting kit with uh, a compass and other other instruments. But it was a, uh, the ruling pen was the the ultimate way to make a uh, make a very precise straight line, and um, and uh, and so that's why that tool is represented there. So really, we have we have in this poster a kind of a historical view, which which is a a pre-digital view, uh, a modernist view. Uh, of, um, of, uh, of what design is about. Uh, I think, again, it's, uh, it's appropriate, it's, uh, it's simple, uh, uh, it, it uh, leads you to uh, an understanding in a way of Armin Hoffman's work and his approach to graphic design and, uh, and all that that represents in terms of the, uh, the whole, in the powerful influence of Swiss uh, graphics. Uh, the, originally, the Swiss, uh, you know, were uh, Max Huber and the other Swiss designers were the ones that influenced uh, Vignelli and, and got him going. The, uh, the, uh, the, you know, Zurich is not very far from Milan, and, um, and uh, geographically, and so uh, there was a, a strong uh, influence there. And, and, uh, and these kind of values, formal values that I'm talking about, uh, certainly would bridge between uh, what we. We're talking about here in terms of Swiss design, and then what we know in terms of uh, modernist Italian design, and then you know someone like Vignelli bringing it to the United States. Now, this is a very different um, uh, uh, aesthetic here because here we have these uh, biomorphic shapes, uh, and this is a, a, a poster for an exhibit of, uh, of uh, furniture. Uh, by the architect Arne Jacobson at the International Museum, again in, in Munich. Um, this kind of shape, uh, it was very, uh, very popular in terms of, uh, of many graphic designers and industrial designers. Uh, it, uh, it, we, we see this very much in the sculptural work of uh, Isamu Noguchi. And, uh, and even in the uh, graphic design of, of Alden Lustig. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and it represents, uh, I think, uh, uh, a kind of a spin off of what, what I, I think is uh, an influence from surrealism. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and, it's, and it's interesting to me that, uh, that uh, Mendel in this poster has, uh, has made these beautiful, these three beautiful black shapes, and, uh, and let them become the, the dominant form. 
this represents, um, we haven't really used the word shape before in, in this presentation. And I think uh, uh, we've talked about symbols, we've talked about, uh, but again, here again, we're coming back to uh, uh, Marjorie's great point about appropriateness, because uh, what, what could be more appropriate talking about Ernie Jacobson's work than, than these shapes? Uh, and so that's, I think, uh, I think that's a very, uh, very important point. Now here we have, a, again, an interesting uh, 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 poster which, uh, which uh, uh, takes on a more representational uh, uh, quality, uh, where we have these clouds which, uh, uh, which are uh, becoming uh, very, uh, Suspect in terms of their uh, their uh, their treatment of the of the eye symbol. The eye symbol has always been a a very uh, uh, important uh, uh, form in terms of symbolism. Uh, we see even today the uh, uh, on, on television the uh, the eye, which becomes a symbol of CBS, and uh, has been actually for uh, maybe 30 years now. Uh, but um, and, and so in some cases the uh, the uh, and I think in this instance the eye becomes a uh, a uh, kind of a universal symbol for uh, for, uh, for for this uh, for getting across the idea of this poster. Again, now this is uh, this is a uh, an interesting poster because this uh, is simple. It, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, in, in the Armand Hoffman poster, we saw the, the, uh, the tools, uh, these, we could call them, I guess, antique tools of, uh, of graphic design and, and drafting. And, and this uh, pre-digital tools, uh, sounds like prehistoric tools, but actually uh, this is a, a, what's called a T-square, even though the, the T is upside down here, this is a, uh, a way in which the uh, designer would uh, be able to uh, make straight lines and keep them parallel. And, and actually, uh, I mentioned before the ruling pen, in terms of making lines, well, this would be the tool that you would guide the ruling pen along to make the line. And you could slide the, 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 the T-square up and down the left or right side of the, uh, of the dry, drafting board in uh, making your image. So this kind of uh, uh, the meaning here, I think, uh, comes through uh, uh, once you uh, once you uh, understand the, uh, the uh, what the image is, and um, uh, uh, and I think that again it's, it's it's a good example of simplicity. Uh, you'll notice that the very top of the T-square how that aligns with the typography on the left. Uh, these um, these organizational relationships are very important uh, in, um, in in effective design. Uh, great uh, one of the great uh, modernist uh, designers, uh, Leslie Molinage, who was a master teacher at the Bauhaus. He defined design as uh, a, a thinking in relationships, and uh, and that's why the designer has to be concerned about how everything fits together in, in the space. And, uh, and, and so you'll notice that the, uh, that the top of the typography aligns with the top of the, of the T-square, and that the uh, left, line, left edge line aligns vertically with the left edge of the T-square. So there's a sense of orderliness about this, interrupted, if you will, by the shadow, which again um, uh, adds another, uh, another element to the Poster, which, which helps to make it interesting. Without the shadow, I think it would be uh, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting as it is. Uh, and also the uh, the fact that the T squares in color and textured, you know, because many many T squares the T squares, such as this one here, were were made from wood. And many of the posters, like this one, it's almost as if he's the art director of the poster and playing with composition and layers and typography and image and this mixed media. Of Photography and graphic design, and uh, it's really interesting. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's interesting to, uh, to to speak a bit about uh, about Mendel's uh, life. Um, he was born in, in Essen in Germany, which is in the Ruhr and the and the West. 
Um, and uh, he had a very turbulent early life, uh, moving from Essen to the Netherlands and then to Paris and down to Marseille and eventually across to America. Uh, and then following the, the liberation of France by um, the Allied troops in 1945, uh, uh, he was starting to think about heading back to, back to Europe. He worked as a German interpreter uh, and, and ended up back in Germany in 1953. Um, and he went to the, design, the school of design in Basel, which was the place where Armin Hoffman was teaching. And that's where he learned his uh, kind of formalist uh, design training and um, met a number of people that he would go on to work with throughout his career. Uh, he opened a design studio in um, uh, Munich with uh, Klaus Oberer, who was a partner, one of his school classmates. And then uh, Mendel went on to define a whole generation of printed promotional material for a number of cultural institutions across Germany. Uh, and I think his style, his graphic style, is pretty much represented by what we've seen so far in, in, in these images uh, today. Uh, from uh, 1980 onward, uh, Mendel was the in-house designer for the International Museum of Design in Munich. And, uh, and from the 1990, uh, uh, other, other clients as well. Uh, in these roles, he was given the utmost creative freedom to experiment with his graphic vernacular and create work that was entirely out of its time. And I think this is important, and that is that, uh, that the designer has establishes a, a, enough credibility with the client so that the uh, the designer can basically do whatever they want in terms of the, the, of the imagery and not feel constrained by, uh, by marketing rules or other, other rules. And, uh, and this is the kind of situation we see in these posters. It's this freedom of, of concept and this freedom of form that, uh, that's coupled with a, with a strong a formalist uh, a graphic uh, sense that, uh, that makes this work so effective. Again, we, uh, we have a very geometric uh, uh, element here to a contrasting uh, uh, situation with, uh, with the uh, natural curves of the bird and the uh, geometric curves of the, of the circle here. Uh, and um, uh, so it's interesting how the abstract form blends with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the representational uh, symbolic form of the bird. Um, uh, I think... Uh, uh, I'm impressed by uh, by the uh, by how uh, Mendel is is really dealt with with contrast as a is an important uh, important element uh, contrast here of natural versus geometric uh, and and also I'm impressed with his use of color I think he's uh, he's really a master colorist and I think you'll if you come and see the exhibit you'll get an even better sense of that because you'll see the uh, these large areas of color. Speaking of color, <laughs> uh, another uh, another interesting um, composition of symbols and um, and abstract forms. Um, this was a design for UNICEF, so another social social cause. Again, uh, an interesting typographic uh, solution. Um, you know, uh, some designers have, have said that, uh, you know, all, all, all you really need as a designer is to work with typography. You don't need to have any other thing if you want to really get down to basics. Uh, but here we have this contrasting direction uh, implied, which, um, uh, uh, which is, uh, I think, very eye-catching. Uh, uh, it's interesting, the, the, the typography here has been distorted to make it look like it's going back in space. Uh, but it's distorted in a very elegant, understandable uh, way. It's not uh, just stretched arbitrarily, which I think happens too often with students today. They'll say, oh, I, I, you know, the computer allows me to, to do this, and so I can just really go crazy with this. Well, no, I think you have to have some sense of, uh, again, appropriateness and some sense of uh, concern for legibility and, and whether the, uh, whether the, t whether the, uh, the um, adapt adaptation of, of the typography really uh, uh, makes sense overall on the poster. 
Now again, uh, this is about as simple as it gets. Uh, you have this vignette of color with this form in the center. Um, uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to go to the exhibit and really find out what this poster is uh, is promoting. Uh, you know, by any chance, Jesse? Titled Ulysses. Hmm? Okay, Ulysses. Okay, okay. So this probably is making reference to uh, uh, the uh, the island, the, the famous island of uh, uh, goddesses or whatever it is. Yeah. This obviously is Japanese. So this. Um, making reference to Japanese uh, uh, exhibit for uh, uh, here we see a very different tr typographic treatment um, the typography hangs like uh, uh, from from the from the top edge uh, and it's not just a matter of the of the, of the red uh, circle being uh, alone but then he's put this uh, texture over it uh, which which makes it more interesting uh, it's always interesting to to see how a designer hand, handles this idea of running type vertically. Uh, this is a great example of how a designer should run type vertically because all it takes is a little tip of the head and you can read it. But if you if you uh, if you uh, if, if you run the type uh, vertically, if you just drop the letters down from the top to the bottom, right side up, it's very hard to read. You have to spell out each word. And so uh, this is a, a one can learn a tremendous amount from how he handles this. Also, the other nice thing about this poster is what he does with the letter spacing between the between the different letters and how that that space is uh, is very uh, how variable that space is from from one uh, word to another. And then also the word spacing too. Um, so again, we're we're back to. Uh, an interesting exploration. It's, it's it's experimental. It's not traditional. Roger, we just want to interject. We have one comment from Bill uh, referencing the poster two posters ago with the type angled backward. Where uh, yeah, that one. Yes, he says uh, that his thought was that treatment of the angled type shows a respect for the typographic form. That's exactly what I was trying to say in terms of the, the process of, uh, of adapting type to a situation that, like this, a concept like this, uh, that it uh, that it uh, that there is a respect for for the original font and, and the original uh, alphabet uh, that exists, and and, and it's not uh, bent or distorted in such a way that it's uh, that it's uh, harder to read or that it looks uh, it looks strange. But uh, again, it's uh, uh, have, having the um, uh, sensitivity to to handle it this way. I think is is one of the uh, reasons why Mandel is such a master designer. Again, a very dramatic uh, uh, presentation. What's our caption here, uh, Jesse? Okay, so this is a, a poster for an opera. I'm not familiar with the opera. I don't even quite know how to pronounce it. Katya Kabanova, uh, at least in German. Uh, and this is for the Bavarian State Opera. You know, uh, 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 graphic design is, is uh, such an interesting uh, field. I mean, uh, and I think this poster represents a uh, you know the idea that of unity and contrast, and if we get down to the most basic elements, uh, uh, here we have unity and contrast. We have the vertical edge here on the white on the right, and then we have this diagonal coming up to it. You know? And then we have the the uh, uh, contrasting uh, uh, element, the house at the bottom. Uh, so uh, uh, in these posters, we could also look through the lens of unity and contrast as to how uh, how effective they are. Um, uh, you'll also notice how this diagonal, which comes up above the green uh, house, points right at the bottom line of the typography, so, the, so that there's a, 
a function. It's like an arrow pointing to the, to the typography leading us into that. Uh, so it, it's interesting to analyze these posters from their, from their formal graphic uh, characteristics. Again, another uh, very interesting uh, uh, typographic treatment here with, uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the typography becoming a uh, basis for the skyline of the city. And that's kind of reinforced with, the, with layers. We have the, the, the different layers of the, uh, the gray and then the type and white and then the, this tree form in the foreground, which, uh, so, so there's an interesting kind of uh, uh, contrast here uh, between the representational quality of the trees and the abstraction of these huge letter forms. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I think that this makes a very, very dramatic, very strong poster. When we unwrapped this one, we had considered it could actually be horizontal until we saw the trees, and that kind of orientates the whole poster just with that little image inserted there on the bottom. Well, you also uh, knew that the, all the posters were vertical. Well, yes, you did know that. <laughs> so, so uh, and that's a very German-Swiss uh, way of doing things in terms of being, uh, being very organized. Okay, here a very simple idea, just a whole collection of eyes as uh, painted and drawn by, by master uh, artists and sculptors. They become a kind of pattern. Design is art. Here again, I think one of the things that strikes me most as I look at these images today is the range of idea, the range of concept, and the range of graphic form which goes along with that. So we have a we have a basically a sans serif uh, alphabet here, which uh, which uh, Mendel has just uh, de designated different colors to different strokes as he's kind of split apart the letters. And again, it's it's. Uh, it's uh, still legible, but it's, uh, it's it's handled in such a way that it's 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 much more interesting than just having these uh, these uh, words uh, in, uh, in straight type. Uh, and again, a good example of the fact that uh, uh, an effective, uh, appropriate solution to a problem, graphic problem, can be just with typography, and you might not need anything else. What's our title on this one? Okay, this is a poster for the uh, uh, Bavarian State Opera of 1994, uh, and uh, it's a production of Don Giovanni. And again, you see um, you see a very elegant uh, uh, example of, uh, of natural curves. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, too much of the of the uh, symbolism here, but I think that's pretty self-evident. Uh, the um, the uh, figurative symbol, the, the cross symbol, uh, and notice how it all fits in the in the vertical rectangle of the poster. This, I think, is one of the most famous uh, of Mendel's posters, and that is uh, this. Uh, Human skull, which becomes, uh, uh, I think, the symbol for uh, cocaine and um, an anti-drug uh, poster. But again, it's uh, it's uh, such a simple idea in which the uh, the powder becomes the way in which to make the image, uh, and um, uh, even the even the typography, which is uh, uh, probably hand drawn here. This. Is, uh, is crude, and uh, this, this, there's no need for this to be refined. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a crude, tough topic, and, uh, and I think it's, uh, I hate to overuse the word, but I think it's very appropriate. Okay, this is an opera poster, obviously, for Falstaff. For the Bavarian State Opera, um, 
And, uh, and here, here uh, Mandel is, uh, has this kind of vignette in the background of color, uh, from orange at the top to yellow at the bottom. But then this uh, centered this uh, 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 very interesting uh, figure. And if you, if you just let your eye cruise the edge, the contour of this figure, uh, you get a sense of, uh, of uh, Mendel's ability at, uh, at uh, treating graphic form. It's a very interesting journey going around the edge of this figure. And again, we have, uh, we have a sense of ambiguity here of size between the big figure and the little figure. They're both the same, but they're both different. Uh, and. Um, uh, you'll notice how the, 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 the figurative elements uh, uh, are oriented to the left, and then that creates extra space on the right-hand side for the typographic elements. Again, a very interesting uh, solution. Here we have, a, uh, again, a, a, I think a very creative uh, solution in which the the continents of the world become these shapes which float, and then and then we add to that the profile of uh, of Gerta uh, is a is a way of uh, suggesting this kind of universal uh, uh, is universal ideas. Uh, this is a poster for the obviously for the Gerta Institute. Roger, we have a question um, from Bill, and he asks whether uh, you know do, did Mendel work with illustrators such as we just saw in the Falstaff poster, would he have worked with an illustrator to create that, or? Uh, I'm not sure that uh, the history, my sense would be that uh, that he would be in control of everything on that poster, and he would have articulated that, uh, that image uh, himself. Uh, and I think that's true of all these posters, too. It would be uh, uh, a total, uh, total control. It wouldn't be... Uh, it wouldn't be a situation where he would farm out uh, uh, part of the process to a typographer or to an illustrator, uh, but he would be—he'd uh, be doing it all. Well, that's the uh, end of the formal presentation, and we're happy to take some additional questions. If anyone has any, please uh, enter your question into your chat box. Um, one question that would be uh, interesting to hear a little bit more about because of your uh, uh, long relationship with Massimo Vignelli, um, do you have any insight on what Massimo felt about um, this particular work and why, why he recommended that this be a, an important exhibit for the Vignelli Center to have um, presented? Well, first of all, I was very... Um happy when, when uh, Massimo would make suggestions like this to me in terms of, well, you've got to have a show of Bruno Manguzzi's posters or you've got to have a show of Mandel's posters. And uh, 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 I wasn't completely uh, uh, aware of all the, the, the great work that, uh, that, the, that both of these men had, had done, but certainly uh, am after having, having done this. Um, I think uh, this is probably, to my knowledge, the first major show of Pierre Mendel's work in the United States. And, uh, and this was part of Massimo's uh, 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 rationale for, for suggesting this, and I think also for suggesting that it be, uh, uh, that it be at the Vignelli Center. Uh, he also uh, urged us to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, circulate these exhibits and uh, some of the work from the from the Mendel show will be going to the uh, Savannah College of Art and Design after the first of the year. So that part of his, um, uh, not only his suggesting we have the show, but that we circulate it, I think it's nice that we can uh, uh, follow with his wishes. And I think it's very appropriate. Uh, I know that many of our viewers today are aware that Massimo passed away on May 27th. And uh, so we're still very much uh, feeling the great loss, but um, I think his uh, uh, having this this really wonderful exhibit is is a great testimony to uh, to his legacy. Agreed. Um, and one other question: um, Can you can you speak to uh, you? You spoke a little bit about the generational difference, which I appreciate because I actually 
did work with T squares and rolling pens before, so um, they, it was it was uh, old home week for me to to see some of these. But um, can you speak about the the use of the poster? And you may have started to allude to this earlier, but the use of the poster as a medium in Europe um, is it do you, is it more common in Europe? than it is in the U.S. Uh, we don't, I, I, it seems to me that we don't think in the U.S. of uh, the poster is the first thing that, that would be a, uh, a communicative element. Uh, is, it, is it more common in, in Europe and why do you think that might be? Well, I think part of it is just tra uh, traditional. Uh, and, um, uh, the poster as a, as a medium has been um, well, I'm sure you've all seen pictures of the, in, in Paris, for instance, on the street. There are these big poster kiosks, these big round kiosks, and and uh, and so for for many many years, posters. I mean, we, we look at the posters of uh, of Toulouse Lautrec, and and uh, we look at the posters of Cassandra uh, in in the uh, uh, 30s. Um, uh, and then the great uh, the great era of, of posters was during the um, uh, the Polish poster area era in the 60s, when uh, when the, po the the poster was the only form that the artist could have to make political commentary, and so we have a in fact at RIT in the uh, Curie Graphic Design Archive we have a wonderful collection of Polish posters from this period that's uh, certainly worth a visit, uh, and. Um, and so the, the, there's been this long tradition in um, in Europe, uh, and, and as with other things, you know, we don't have those same traditions in the U.S. And our uh, our uh, even though there there have been posters, I don't think it's it's it, it has been the long history, and I don't think it continues to today in the same way. If you if you get if you fly from New York uh, from JFK to from uh, JFK to uh, from JFK to um, uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, you get off the plane in Frankfurt, Germany. The first thing you see when you get off the plane are, are posters in the airport, uh, and, and so it's it's very very strong tradition, uh, and, uh, and continues. And uh, and I think in a way, uh, thank goodness for it because it it really is very stimulating for us Americans on this side of the ocean. Very interesting. Thank you. And our last question from Marjorie, who I I did not pay to ask these questions, but she's a perfect transition into our, our last couple of comments here. She asks where the information about the exhibit, uh, time, date, etc., can be found. And as you see on your screen right now, uh, vignelli.rit.edu is the uh, website for the Vignelli Center. And you will find uh, links to the information about the exhibit on that website. Uh, and we encourage everyone to go visit that uh, that site for that information. Again, the exhibit will open on August 25th, and Annette Kroger is coming on September. I'm sorry, I don't have the date. September. Four. September 4th. September 4th at 1 o'clock. Uh, she will be here for the um, Vignelli de design discussion. Uh, that is all the time that we have for today. We want to thank Roger and Jessica for sharing your knowledge and the impressive display of the works by Pierre Mendel. Um, additional questions, should you have them, can be emailed to ritalum at rit.edu or tweeted to at rit underscore alumni with the hashtag MeRIT webinars, and we will direct your question to Roger and Jessica.